OneDayAtATime.com comes on every week with Minister Chestnut live and in living color. So be there every week because Jesus is our rock. Welcome to Life is One Day at a Time.com. I'm Minister Chestnut. Thank you for joining me again on another Faithful Friday where we wake up, keep the faith, and go to sleep. Wake up, keep the faith, and go to sleep. Hey, we wake up and get busy for the glory of God each and every day as we go forth, hey, prospering in mind, body, and soul, domestically, socially, and financially. Pray that you're healed from the top of your head to the tips of your toes because Jesus himself took all our infirmities and all our sicknesses on the cross over 2,000 years ago. And by his stripes, we were healed. So we just get up and get busy for the glory of God. We continue in the book of Acts. The last time we were here, it was in King Agrippa, and Bernice came down from Caesarea to salute Festus. And Festus is going to tell him about Paul. And we're going to see what's going to happen next. This is Festus now talking to King Agrippa. He says, But to whom when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me, desired to have judgment against him accused him of all kind of things. To whom I answered, it is not the manner of the Romans to deliver any man to die before that he, which he is accused, that the accusers face to face and have license to answer for himself concerning the crime laid against him. Therefore, when they were come hither without any delay on the morrow, I sat on the judgment seat and commanded the man to be brought forth against whom when the accusers stood up, they brought none accusation of such thing as I supposed, but had certain questions against him of their own superstitions, and of one Jesus which was dead, whom Paul confirmed to be alive. And because I doubted of such manner of questions, I asked him whether that he would go to Jerusalem and be the judge of these matters. But when Paul had appealed to be reserved until the hearing of Augustus, I commanded him to be kept until I might send him to Caesar. Then Agrippa said unto Festus, I would also hear the man myself tomorrow. And he said, Thou shalt hear him. Now you see, Paul's being brought before kings now to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And on the morrow, when Agrippa was come, and Bernice with great prompt and entered into the place of hearing with the chief captains and the principal of men of the city, at Festivus' command, Paul was brought forth. Hey, Paul's on the carpet again. And Festus said, King Agrippa, and to all men which are present with us, you see this man in whom a multitude of the Jews that had petitioned me both at Jerusalem and also here crying that this man ought not to live any longer. They wanted him killed. But when I found that he had committed nothing worthy of death and that he himself had appealed to Augustus, I have determined to send him, and of whom I have no certain thing to write to my Lord Wherefore I have brought him forth before you, especially before thee, O King Agrippa, that after examining that I might have somewhat to write. For it seemed to me unreasonable to send a prisoner and not with walls to signify the crimes laid against him. See, he got to know what are these Jews trying to accuse Paul of and they don't know because to them it's all a superstition but hey 
Christianity is not a religion, it's a reality. Chapter 26 Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth his hand and answered for himself, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee to be an expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews, wherefore I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth was at first among my own nation at Jerusalem known all the Jews, which they knew me from the beginning. And they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. See, Paul is going to give him a little history now. He's going way back. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers, unto which promise our twelve tribes instantly serving God day and night hope to come, for which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Why should it be brought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? Because barely I thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Naz Nazareth. See, Paul, before he got saved, he, he wasn't, you know, really getting into deep of what was going on with Jesus until he got saved on the road to Damascus. Which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, have received authority from the chief priests, and when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them, and I punished them off every, in every synagogue, and compelled them to blaspheme, and being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even into strange cities. This is Paul telling them how he was. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven, above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me, which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. But rise, and stand on upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things which will appear unto thee, and delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I now send thee. See, this is where the great commission for Saul being saved turned Paul. This is what he had to do. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sin and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and to do the works meant for repentance. This was the great mission that Paul was set out to do, and he was doing it. And he was telling King Agrippa all the situations. For 
These cause of Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me, and have therefore obtained help of God. I continue until this day witness to both small and great, saying to none of the other things other than those things which the prophets and Moses did say to, should come, that Christ should suffer and that he should be first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. This is what Jesus was all about and the Messiah. And as he thus spoke, he spake for himself. Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning does thou make me mad. But he said, I am not mad, but most noble, Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth of these things before of whom I also speak freely, and I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for this thing was not done in a corner. Paul was telling them, saying, I know you know what I'm talking about. You know uh, what's going on with these Jews and of our law, and this is the breakdown, which I just broke it down to you. So, hey, let's get real. King Agrippa, believeth thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuaded me to be a Christian. <laughs> say, say, Paul was laying it out for him. That he was about to save the, the king. And Paul said, I would to God that thou not, not only thou, but also all that heareth me this day were both and almost all together as I am, except in these bonds. And then when he had thus spoken, the king rose up, and the governor and Bernice, and they sat with them. And when they were gone aside, they talked between themselves, saying, This man does nothing worthy of death or of bonds. Then said Agrippa unto Festus, This man might have been set free at liberty, but if he had not appealed unto Caesar. See, Paul had appealed unto Caesar. He had stepped it up a notch, and so he was going to go up for Augustus, who was Caesar at that time. Chapter 27. And when he was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus' band. See, now Paul was going to go into, he appealed to Caesar and they had caught a couple of ships to get him there. And entered into a ship of a woman and we launched, meaning to sail by the coast of Asia, one Aristotus a Macedonian of Thessalonia being with us. And the next day we touched at Sidon, and Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go to his friends to refresh himself. Did Paul still getting liberty, and even though he's a prisoner, he's getting favor. Hey, you get favor. God says when a man finds a wife, he obtains favor of the Lord. And hey, Paul had favor. And when we had launched from thence, we sailed into Cyprus, because the winds were contrary. And when we had sailed over the Sea of Sicilia and Pamphylia, we came into Myra, and a city of Lycia. And there was uh, there... The centurion found a ship of Alexander sailing into Italy, and he put us therein. It's like going from one ship to another ship. But they was going to get Paul to Augustus because he had appealed to Caesar. And up, oh, I'm out of time. We'll pick this up next Faithful Friday when we continue in the book of Acts. 
and see what Paul is going to do once he reaches Rome. Time.com comes on every week with Minister Chestnut live and in living color. So be there every week because Jesus is our rock.